Hi, I'm Tim. In this video, we'll go over the construction and flying of the Stevens Aeromodel Buzzbomb 400 three-channel radio control model RC airplane. Let's get to it. Back at the start of free flight model airplane, a very popular gas powered free flight model airplane was the Buzz Bomb. Uh, in the 1930s and 40s, it was a very popular plane. It flew well. The plane was large. It had a wingspan of about 70 inches because the primitive gas engines in those days were heavy and just needed a larger airplane to carry that weight. Here's a picture of a Buzz Bomb back in the 50s with a huge ignition gas engine in front as well as a later day recreation from a kit of the Buzz Bomb with a more modern four cycle engine. Just again, a very pretty free flight model airplane. You put in the gas engine, a small amount of fuel, the engine would run for a set period of time, get up to altitude, and then glide down to land in the field from when you took off. Practical radio control uh, equipment didn't really become available until the early 1950s, so everything was free flight until then. The Buzz Bomb was a popular design just with its layouts, its looks, the way it flew. And as radar control systems came into common usage, many modelers took this free flight design and made it into a radar control variant. In this video, we'll talk about the Stevens Aero Model Buzz Bomb 400, which is right here. This is a modern reimagination, recreation of the original Buzz Bomb, general characteristics, but using modern building techniques, laser cutting, to have this very nice flying three-channel radio controlled RC model airplane. We'll take a look now at the Stevens Aeromodel website. This is the home page. See some of the items they sell. We'll go up to the top to laser cut kits, model airplane kits. We come to this screen and RC park flyers will be the category that will have the buzz bomb. Very nice pictures of the various kits. We'll take a closer look at the buzz bomb. Uh, here's a picture, description, pricing. Notice also that there are various components that you can add from Stevens Aero. Motor for $20, ESC, propeller, etc. I typically will add these components. They work fine. It just makes for a quick, complete kit. You can click on the picture to get a blow up of the buzz bomb. Sometimes there's additional pictures. In addition on the website, we can look at the builder's manual. Very complete builder's manual. Um, you get this with a kit of paper copy. We'll go into more detail on this later in the video. The Stevens Zero model kits are all made in the US and Colorado. Uh, you buy the kits through the website. We took a view of the website so you can see how that works out. In addition to the airplanes, there's components that would work well with that model, motors, electronic speed controls, etc. I typically buy those components as recommended by Stevens Aero. I built about a dozen of the Stevens Aero model kits, and they're all uh, very similar in design philosophy. What Stevens Aero model has done is has a very precise methodology where they create the kit out of interlocking pieces. It's like a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. Uh, they're very precisely cut. There's a tab interlock system. You can actually dry fit entire assemblies of fuselages and wings. It'll hold itself together with the tabs and uh, slots. When you're satisfied with the arrangement, you put in CA glue and it all goes together. The kits are so precisely built that very often there are not plans associated with the kits. It's just an illustrated construction manual. There's not a need for the plans because the kits are so well organized and designed. If you just put them together piece by piece as illustrated in the construction manual, that's all you need to get a successful outcome from the kit. So let's take a brief look at the instruction manual for the construction manual for the Buzz Bomb 400. So this is the book that comes with the kit. You can see it has a cover. Um, there is a project checklist in the beginning with kit contents. Everything's itemized. Suggested electronics, other equipment, required building supplies, optional supplies, just everything you would need. Each of the laser cut parts is identified. So if you're trying to look for a part, you can see where it is on all these diagrams here. Some general assembly instructions. And then this gets to the heart of the model. For the fuselage, there's steps one through six. And what happens, each step has its own picture saying what should happen with that step. You can see the tabs, 
uh, top instructions, everything you need to create that component so when you put it together and glue it, it all goes uh, together properly. And it's that way throughout the entire model. So it's a very enjoyable building experience. You just follow the directions of the models created in front of your eyes, glue it together, and, and everything works out just fine. There are, there are very few, if any, kits that are designed at this level of precision, but Steven Zero pulls it off with all of their kits, and they're just a lot of fun to build unique and they, they look nice and they fly as advertised because it's very high quality balls in addition to the laser cutting. So now we're going to uh, do a little bit discussion in detail of the model itself. The model weighs 16 ounces which is very light. It's a two cell battery uh, flies just fine and the wingspan is about 40 inches. So let's take a look at the fuselage then the wing. So let's start with a discussion of the fus fuselage of the Buzz Bomb 400. You can see it's a fairly short nose moment. That was common for the models back in the day because the gas motors are just so heavy. So they've captured that feel for it uh, with the motor. Also, you can see the triangular top. Again, a common feature of the free flight models. It's kind of unique and there's one dial in the front, a single dial back here, two sides for the rubber band hold downs. Again, just capturing the flavor of that model. The motor fits in very nicely in the nose section. Um, plenty of room for cooling. I elected to cover my model with transparent plastic covering, so this way I can see inside the um, engine area there's not a hatch. If anything's amiss, there's loose wires, anything of that nature. You can see on the side some of the tabs of the construction of the fuselage. This is a panel here, a tab, an alignment tab all along here. Again, following the instructions, everything goes just fine uh, to build the model. Note also the landing gear. This dial is a callback to the earlier models where you would have a music wire underneath the fuselage, the gear located here, and rubber bands would actually hold it in place to allow it to flex back and forth. Personally, I found this was too weak. I put in two wheel collars here on either side to give some strength to the landing gear. Again, just a normal modification you make as you're building a model. Underneath, there is a quite large hatch for access to the radio components, particularly the batteries between flights. Two servos, your receiver, the battery connector, electronic speed control. The one change I did make, you'll notice here and here are magnets to hold the hatch in place. I just wasn't satisfied that that would be sufficient to hold everything in place flight after flight. So I added a dowel and I put a rubber band across that just to make sure we don't lose the hatch in flight. Normal construction in the back. There is a tail skid that comes with the model. I like steerable tail wheels, but you'll notice again with the buzzard bombshell shape, you have the elevator behind the rudder. So there's no danger of interference, but to make a steerable tail wheel with this rudder, you'd have to put a um, music wire through the fuselage to the tail wheel. I just went with a skid. Uh, but it, you could put in a steerable uh, tail wheel if you want to do that on your buzz bomb. So that's about it for the fuselage itself. Again, you can see the characteristic shape calling back to the buzz bomb and um, just the right size for fun three channel flying. This is the buzz bomb's wing. There's nothing unique or special about this. You can see the dihedral on each wing tip. It is a three channel model, so there's no ailerons on the model, and it turns well with just the rudder. There's plenty of rudder authority. Again, the wing is built with their jig methodology. You can see the large um, ribs for an airfoil, the front spars, these cross uh, ribs to keep from warping. Again, it's very important. You'll build it with the um, jigged construction method, but do check it on a flat building surface from time to time so you don't have any warpage creep in with the wing. The jig system does work, but again, double, triple check on your building board that it is a flat wing with all the pieces inserted before you add the glue to the wing. And again, I covered with transparent plastic covering.
seen the video, the model flies wonderfully. It's a light model, uh, so if there's wind like there was in the videos that you'll see, it bounces around a little bit. That is to be expected. It handles very well. It flies slow. So if you like flying low and slow, close in and watching a model maneuver, this is the model for you. So it's just a quiet, relaxed, fun three-channel flyer for uh, relatively calm wind days, just a relaxing model, radio control model airplane. There's one important thing I want to touch upon for safety. That's the safe start system that I've installed in this aircraft. There's a card up here that has another video on the safe start, but I'm just going to go through it real quick because it could save somebody from being hurt. By the way, in all these videos, I do not get any merchandise from anybody. Whatever I say is what I think about that product. And this is the safe start from Dave's RC Electronics. The website will be right here in the video. It's just a circuit board, a little push button, and two um, plugs, one to your ESC, one to your receiver. They're marked on there. There's no soldering, and you're good to go. What the Safe Start does is, with this installed uh, between your receiver and ESC, you plug in the battery. This little light comes on red, which means that there's power to your system. Your controls work, elevator, rudder, ailerons, whatever. So you can check that, but the electric motor is cut out of the system. When you're ready to fly, you hold this down for three seconds. The light will turn green. Now your controls work in addition to the motor for safety on the runway. When you're done with your flight, push this one time, it turns red. So there's no danger of accidentally uh, hitting the throttle and having the motor go unexpectedly. So let me demonstrate that super quick here on the light bomb. So here's our two cell battery. This is the light for the safe start. So you'll notice the red light on the safe start. That's the safety feature, powers to the system. Watch the elevator, up, down, left, right. But when we move the throttle, the engine does not uh, move. When we're ready to fly, we're on the runway, we hold this for three seconds. Light turns green. The controls work on the back. And notice that the motor works as well. When we're done flying, we simply hit the button once. It's a red. Throttle doesn't work. It's a wonderful safety device. It could save an accident with these motors, with power. They're, they're, they're strong motors. Do consider getting a safe start for all of your electric model, um, electric RC models.